Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge Programming Tutorial Series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. And in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about motor encoders, a very useful tool for your DC motors. So here I've initialized a test motor and I'm going to use it to show you the different encoder modes. And there are four of them. First one, run without encoder. This one allows you to just set the motor power directly to the encoder, or the motor power directly to the motor without checking anything else, just like we did in our last tutorial. However, this one, it does still check the encoder tick counts. Run using encoder is very similar, but it uses a PID loop to check the velocity of the motor and make sure it's traveling at the right speed, and then it'll uh, adjust accordingly. Run to position allows you to set a target position that you want the encoder ticks to go to, and then it'll hold the position um, if it's not told to do anything else. Then stop and reset encoder just sets the encoder value back to zero. So there, the way we set an encoder mode is using this method here. It's the motor name dot set mode and Let's say we want to set it to run without encoder, so we go run without encoder, and it looked like that, DC motor dot run mode, run without encoder. So let's take a look at an example of using this in autonomous. Okay, we have, I've initialized a left and a right drive motor for a push bot, and we're going to use the run using encoder. So right here is where you do your brakes and directions and everything. I'm not going to change that except, um, we want our left side motor to be the different direction. We want it to be reverse. I'll get rid of the simple as I always do. Okay, and then here is where we want to set our encoder. That we want to set our um, encoder mode. But I like to do this by creating a method. So I'm gonna just do void reset encoders. And you'll see as you, and it won't take an input, and you'll see as we get more into it that this method will become very useful rather than just declaring it every time. So this is our method. We're going to start by resetting the encoder to zero and then to set the encoder mode that we want to use. And then I'll just use reset encoders right here. So now another thing I like to do, another method I like to make is ones for directions. So in this case, I'm just going to go driving forward. And it's going to take some inputs. It's going to take the power we want the motor to go at and the ticks we want it to go to. And that's that. So in here, we can use a while loop to make the motors keep going until it's reached the desired tick count. So that will be while and let's go, it's left drive motor. And the met, the um, function we would use is get current position. And what that does is returns the um, tick counts that the motor is currently at. So if we want it to keep going until it reaches a certain thing, we're going to go till it's less than ticks. Then we're going to want to do the same, oops, what, ticks. And then we're going to want to do the same thing for the right drive motor, if that's less than ticks. I know it's going off the screen here, but I'm putting in op mode is active here so that when the stop button is pressed, it'll actually stop. And if it doesn't stop, without that, it won't stop. You'll get a crash error, and that's not fun. So in here, we can just set the power. So we're on the left drive motor that set power, and we'll set it to the power our method will tell us to, and we'll do the same for the right drive motor. Okay, and now now that it's let's say it's gone to its the motors have reached their position, and we want to do something else afterwards, but the encoders are still going to be at that position, so we're going to going to want to use that reset encoders method which will stop and reset the encoder and then set the mode back again, which is very, which is why that method is very useful. So let's say now we wanted to drive forward a thousand ticks. So we're going to, why is my, okay. 
This is weird. Okay, now if we can use that method. Let's say we want it to go full power at a thousand ticks. That's how you would use that method, and the method already has in it the while loop and all of this going in. Now that could be used for run using encoder or run without encoder. I suggest run using encoder. It's way more consistent. But now let's move on to run to position. So I still have my reset encoder method. It does look a bit different. It's just stop and reset, but that's okay because we're going to do something different here. So if let's say we want it again to go a thousand ticks. Well, we can set our target position because that's what um, run to position does. It sets a target position. So we can set our target position to be a thousand. So let's go left drive motor. Or not set power, set target position. And we want it to be a thousand. All right. So then we can also do that for the right. And then we just have to set the motor powers. Say we want it to go full power. I'm not going to do a method for this one. You guys can, I'm sure you know how to do a method by now. You can set it up similarly to how I have my other method. And then that's how this will work. Okay, and now it's going to go while it reaches a thousand. And to make sure the methods don't collide, we want to have this that says while left drive motor and the method we can use is is busy so that nothing else will happen while the motor is moving and we can do the same for the right and then we can just leave the while loop blank because we want nothing going on while the motors are moving and then after that we can use our reset encoders method and then we're back to zero and we can continue with our movements. And I guess that's it for today's tutorial. Today you learned about the different encoder modes and how they can be used. And from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.